I'm Michael Gingle from Fangoria, Rumor, Birth Movies, Death, a number of other outlets. I remember way back when I was a kid, uh, even back then, I was reading every film review I could find, and um, I read a review one day of a little low-budget raunch comedy called Squeeze Play uh, by a strange little company called Troma. And this review mentioned that uh, Lloyd Kaufman, the director, came in and introduced the film to the critics by saying, this was back at a time when slasher movies were very popular and very controversial for all their blood and gore. And uh, Lloyd had apparently said, most gross and disgusting movies these days are full of violence. This gross and disgusting movie is just comedy. <laughs> so um, cut to uh, several years later, uh, I'm at film school in New York City and putting out a little Xerox fanzine uh, reviewing uh, horror and other genre films. And I started to see more movies by this company called Troma because Troma would screen every single one of their movies for critics, no matter how small, no matter how grungy or down market they were. Um, I have a feeling it was because screening a movie to get it reviews in the papers was cheaper than buying advertising in the papers. But the most memorable screening I went to was in early 1986 in a very nice screening room on Broadway. It was for a film that was shot as Health Club Hero, uh, but sometime between the end of shooting and the uh, application of the narration, both the movie and its hero had been renamed The Toxic Avenger. Sitting in that room with me were uh, a number of the film's actors, in fact. Uh, that was kind of a first for me. About half the cast seemed to be in that room with me. And uh, I watched this movie, and it was unlike anything I had ever seen. Uh, there had been gory, kind of uh, satirical slapstick films before. Uh, Reanimator had come out the year before, for example. But Toxic Avenger was something completely different and new, and, and again, unlike anything I'd ever seen. And I kind of knew right then and there that I was witnessing the birth of a cult classic. I then went and saw it at uh, a midnight show uh, downtown, uh, I believe it might have been at the, the 8th Street Playhouse or the Waverly Theater, uh, where the Toxic Avenger began its march to becoming uh, one of the greatest cult movies of all time, as evidenced by the fact that you are all here for this 35 millimeter screening. So thank you for Woo! coming down to check it out. My history with the Toxic Avenger doesn't, does not end there. Um, a couple of years after, or I think a year after that, uh, the summer of 87, um, a good portion of Toxic Avenger Part Two was shot here in Westchester County. And I spent about a month hanging out on the set and uh, interviewing everybody and hanging out with the bad girls and having a really great time. My greatest memory of that entire experience is, I of course wanted to interview Lloyd Kaufman. But as he was the director, he was always busy doing something or other during the shoot. So he said, why don't you come out to dinner with me and the cast and crew and we can do the interview there. So uh, I went out with them and I wound up sitting at a table with Lloyd and about 12 other people, this big round table in a Chinese restaurant in Peekskill, New York. And um, so every, you know, Lloyd basically went around the table, took everybody's order. And when the waitress came up, he ordered for all 14 of us in fluent Chinese. And um, that, that was when I found there were many different sides to Lloyd Kaufman that I was not aware of. Uh, then I went to see The Toxic Avenger Part Two on that screen. And uh, when I had been on the set, they had told me, oh, well, this is about uh, the first half of the movie, Toxie goes to Japan to fight evil, and then he comes back to Tromaville and he fights the devil. So I watched Toxic Avenger Part Two, and it gets to the end and there's no devil. And I said, what's going on? And someone from Troma said, oh, we decided to save that for Part Three. And we turned that into its own, a whole other film. So. Uh, this was before Kill Bill and Harry Potter and Twilight were cutting movies into parts one and two. As usual, Troma was there first. Uh, there were many other uh, comedy horror films to come from Troma after that, of course. Placid Newcomb High, Sergeant Kabuki Man, uh, Terror Firmer, and uh, my personal favorite, Woo! Tromeo and Juliet. Yeah, a lot of, I guess we have a lot of fans of that. Um, written by none other than James Gunn, who is now making $100 million Guardians of the Galaxy films. So uh, it's proof that everybody starts somewhere. And um, I think it's, speaking of Marvel, safe to say that without the Toxic Avenger, we would not today have movies like Deadpool 1 and 2 and all the many other films that have combined extreme violence with outrageous comedy. Toxic Avenger is still one of the best at it, and um, I'm very happy uh, that after this we'll be showing a mockumentary called Toxic Tutu, so it's a great double feature we have, and we have uh, several guests from the film here. Uh, we have Mark Torgel, who is Melvin himself. <laughs> we have Robert Pritchard, who plays the villainous slug. <laughs> and we have Gary Schneider, who plays the equally villainous bozo. <laughs> as well as 
Joe Nardelli, the creator of Toxic Tutu. Um, unfortunately, uh, about maybe four or five hours ago, uh, I got an email from Lloyd Kaufman. Uh, he told me that uh, he had suffered a bad eye infection, and he was uh, going to Mount Sinai Hospital to have it taken care of, unfortunately. So uh, he's uh, currently recovering there right now. Uh, however, in the great trauma tradition, he has sent us a photo of his eye infection, so if we can have that up here. Okay, that was the cue. I'm pretty sure we do have a photo of that. We'll give it, okay. That's his eye. Here we go. It's very dark in that room, apparently. All right, well, we'll give it just another moment. Anyway, um, Lloyd did send his great regrets that he cannot be here. Um, but he should be recovering and back in action very, very soon. And um, Troma now has, oh, there we go. So that'll be the, the first of uh, the many gross outs this evening. <laughs> Hope you get better soon, Lloyd. Um, but he's uh, you know still cranking him out. He's got Return to Newcomb High, Volume 2, currently playing <laughs> festivals around the country, uh, probably soon to be on video. So um, after the feature, we're going to have a Q&A with everybody. They're going to come up and talk about it. Then we're going to have a brief intermission, and then we're going to get into a toxic tutu. So, um, again, please, no talking, no texting. Uh, tip your servers well, and enjoy the show. visitor up front here. We have the Toxic Avenger himself over there, making a retreat now. Okay. Um, please uh, join me in welcoming Mark Torgel, Melvin the Mop Boy. Woo! Robert Pritchard as Slug. school and the girlfriend of a very good friend of mine had a friend who was a, an assistant in casting at Troma. So I found out about the audition. I came down. Thank you. Came down for the And um, I auditioned. It's like six or seven times. Went back and back and back. And I didn't get the part. Another actor had got the part who had worked with Troma the year before. Um, and he, a couple of, maybe a week or so later, he got another part and left that, and then Troma called me to come down. Um, that other actor was Vincent D'Onofrio, who was one of the <laughs> greatest character actors over the last 30 years or so. Um, really, so I you know, feel honored to have replaced him in the movie. But interestingly, my friend's girlfriend, her name is Michelle, and she, she's the one who told me about the audition, and she's here tonight. With, um, with Steve, my friend, and their daughter, Brenda, wherever you guys are. Thanks for telling me about the audition. Um, I sent in a resume by mail. I saw there was a casting notice in backstage. So I just sent in a resume. They called me in. And I auditioned right away with uh, uh, the actress who played Wanda. 
they paired us off immediately, and I, uh, we auditioned together six or seven times, and the last few times they actually had us make trailers for movies like Stuck on You and, and uh, a, a couple of others, which they actually used. So um, we ought, our, our auditions were trailers. That was it, you know. <laughs> Mine is a kind of strange one because I was actually going to NYU film school and uh, Troma put up a notice on our job board to come and work on a real film, but don't expect to get paid. Um, so I went out and, and interviewed for a job to, to be on the crew and uh, Lloyd was like, oh, you go to NYU. Well, well, what do you want to do on this film? And I said, well, can I be the script supervisor? Because then I get to work with the director. And he was like, yeah, you got it. What else do you want to do? <laughs> and I said, uh, can I, I would like to write. Can I write? Said, yeah, you can write additional scenes. What else do you want to do? And uh, I always say, well, I should have asked if I could direct. But then the funny thing was how I got into the acting part. At, while I was script supervising, and this was for the first turn on the movie, year before uh, Toxic Avenger, there was an actor that was supposed to show up for a very important role um, of the camp counselor's boyfriend, and he didn't show up. And Lloyd said, Mark, you do it. And uh, it was another kind of over-the-top nerdy character, and they liked what I did so much in that when they were casting Toxic Avenger. They just asked me if I wanted to be an elder. Can I be a script supervisor too? Which I said, yeah. but that, that was, uh, it was just, yeah, it happened like that, just like that. And it was really fun. I didn't even have to audition. So. <laughs> so, how was it getting to the mindset of Melville playing the character? Well, you know what? I always come from a position of totally outrageous, over the top acting. I used to actually do that sort of thing. It was very easy for me to fit into the trauma way of outrageous overacting scenarios like we all, you know, Lloyd would always be screaming, give me more, give me more, give me more, go crazy, go wild. So yeah, it, was, it was good for me. And you were, you were supposed to be thought to look like Alfred the Newman. Well, there was an article when, when the movie came out, there was an article that actually said that I looked like Alfred um, I don't think it was intentional, but I took it. I was all right with that. I was always a mad fan. So. And uh, to Gary and Bob, each of you, uh, can we talk about getting into your roles, especially your incredibly stressed roles in this film? <laughs> I, I saw Bozo as a rabid dog who was always at that, that crazy um, emotional level. He was, you know, sitting down in the morning to read the newspaper. Well, he probably wouldn't be doing that, but uh, <laughs> whatever he was doing, he was always at that at that level. And that's where I started the character. He was very, very angry. He had a lot of hurt inside, underneath. Um, and of course, it was a one-dimensional uh, cartoon character kind of role. Um, so he was always kind of kind of up there. But that's where I started with the, the concept that he was a, a rabid dog. I remember that. Yeah. yeah um in the original script, I had five lines. And uh, the first scene that we shot together was the hot tub scene. And when we, were, when we were rehearsing it, I started giving myself more lines. The lines that I gave myself were the one where I'm repeating the other actor. What, are you an asshole? I go, what, are you an asshole? You want him to get fucking sick? You want him to get fucking sick? You know, so, so Lloyd was like, yeah, more of that. And, and so, so when the scenes came up, I would just, you know, make up lines and stuff, and then then they asked us to make up scenes, like where we kill, uh, beat up that little lady and stole her car. Uh, I'm singing the Toyota commercial of the day. Oh, what a feeling! Um, so I actually I saw myself as his sidekick. Um, he was like the nut, and I was like kind of like kind of in awe of that, and but wanting to you know like uh, contain it enough so that stuff could get done. 
Now I've heard that in your scenes in the health club, Marissa Tomei is in there as an extra. Is that true? We heard that. We don't know. <laughs> I, I can vouch for the fact that that is actually true because Marissa and I kind of got friendly. She really loved my mop. <laughs> You know, it was, it was broken up into obviously a lot of close-ups and longer shots and, and um, it was complicated. It was the, I think the stunt coordinator on that worked on the French Connection. So they, they, they knew where to put their money, obviously, for something that could be that dangerous. You don't want to, you know, Lloyd is really good at taking a nickel and turning it into a dollar. You get his money's worth for everything. But for when it came to the stunt scenes, especially that, you, you don't want to get too cheap on it. So he did a really good job with that. Um, I just remember it being broken down into a lot of, a lot of days. Um, and then the final day, the final big scene was when the car went over the cliff. Um, all the, the news stations, uh, the main, main news, news stations on TV that, that in New York City at the time were there. It was a really big event. There aren't too many car scenes like that on the East Coast. More, more so at Bay Hawk West, I guess, but pretty cool. Also, the, uh, when the car flipped over on its top, when we were behind the camera, we could see that the roll bar collapsed, and we everyone thought that these guys, the driver, just died because uh, the, the roll bar collapsed. Well, that was the passenger side. Everybody ran up to the car. Luckily, the uh, driver's side did not collapse, and he was okay. But Lloyd always said if he killed that guy, that would have been the end of his career. He would have stopped making movies right there. So that was, and and also I think that. That car scene is in every other trauma movie ever made after that. <laughs> they, keep, they keep using it over and over. So what are all of your memories of Andre Miranda, who played Sarah, and Mitchell Cohen, who was the toxic Avenger? None. I never met her. I was never on set with her, had no scene. We didn't do any, we didn't have any scenes with her. Um, I know that her boyfriend or husband or whoever it was financed a lot of that movie. And uh, they used to pick her up in a limousine, uh, finance, you know, that her boyfriend provided. And uh, often I would get to ride back with her. She was really sweet. It was always fun to spend time with her in the limo. But I wish I had something juicy to tell you, but, you know, I was just too nerdy. <laughs> guy that could never <laughs> close the deal. <laughs> but she was really sweet, actually. And how about uh, Mitchell Cohen, the Avenger himself? There's a cameo of Mitch um, in the film where, where Sarah, the blind girl, throws the sandwich out the window and hits somebody in the face. That was the real Mitch without his makeup on. That was the talk of <laughs> without his makeup on. That was pretty cool. He was a really great guy. He was a good guy. They dubbed his voice. Originally, it was going to be his voice that in the film, yeah. and then they, uh, they guess they felt that this deep voice would be better, and they, they dubbed it. So poor Mitch all, not only didn't get his face on screen, he didn't get his voice on screen, so it was sad. We don't know what happened to him. But. <laughs> so you shot this film as Health Club Hero, that was the title, and then two years later it emerges as The Toxic Avenger. Uh, what are your, I believe, um, Mark and Bob, I think you may have been in that same screening that I saw Well, when we were making the film, I always thought it was either going to be the worst film ever made or a huge cult film. And in my opinion, it turned out to be both. <laughs> um, but then when it started getting the midnight screenings, it was really cool and interesting. And I think you mentioned the Bleecker Street. Um, and I actually went there and made a personal appearance one night and tried to do stand-up comedy. And I was awful, but the crowd, the crowd loved me anyway. So it was, it was really cool when it started taking off. Rob? The first time I saw it, I thought, geez, this is like punk rock. <laughs> That's, that was my, that was, I was like, this is like what punk rock is to music, this is the film. Um, sort of outrageous in your face. Doesn't get 
gonna fly in, <laughs> you know, and, uh, um, and, it, and it has a kind of a sort of a extremely anti-establishment message. Um, the, the, I was kind of flashing back on that golf scene, um, thinking like, wow, that's kind of coming true again. Uh, watching that guy play golf. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, maybe the, maybe the music scene's going to change now, too. Do mm -hmm. so. we have any uh, questions for the audience? Uh, in the center there? Hey, uh, it's mainly, uh, Mark kind of mentioned it briefly, but it's more for Gary. Gary, you were saying you went to acting school. Mark, I mean, you went to film school. But as an actor who went to acting school, and this is your first big movie, do you ever say, do uh, you want me to tone it down a little bit to Lloyd, or does Lloyd just go crazier? And while making this, you say, is this going to be, I'm embarrassed, or were you like, all right, I don't care, I'm, this is my first movie, I want to go crazy? Yeah, I, the, the scene where I'm uh, on the bench press, pressing go, <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to make it a little more subtle. And I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't know as much about film as I would, would have wished I had. So Lloyd said, tell you what. I'll count to 10. First three, I'll go one, two, three, go really subtle, just really subtle when you're bench, bench pressing. Then the next three, a little, a little more, like kind of normal as I normally might if I was bench pressing. Then the next four go crazy. <laughs> and of course, Lloyd in the editing room made sure it was cut to just the last four counts to have me go, <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, I, I came out of a, you know, acting school with Shakespeare and theater and all that stuff. and. You know, uh, a month later, I was doing the Toxic Avenger, which you know, couldn't have been more <laughs> different. But I got to tell you, I, I, um, I appreciated it. I was really blown away by the experience. Other questions? Oh, over here. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it was just it's acting. That's all. And, and uh, <laughs> uh, class of Newcomb High, um, I actually had a script and lines. And, uh, <laughs> the concept, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it was what I liked about class of Newcomb High was that it was a group of us, and that we were more of an ensemble. And and um, uh, so I, I I appreciated that. Uh, you know, I, I think it probably would have been weirder for Gary to not be the, you know, than for me, because if I'm, for me, it was just a promotion. You know? uh. I really enjoyed it. First of all, I didn't have to audition for it. And after being the stressed out bozo, it was a much lighter role for me. Just, just be able to breathe a little bit and have some fun. Not that I didn't enjoy doing both, because I did. But this was just a, a lot easier, a lot easier for me and a lot, and, and a lot of fun. The tox, uh, Toxic had like five times the budget of Class of Newcomb High. So Lloyd was really pinching nickels on that one. Um, the, you, can, like, you, you don't know unless you were there, but like at that, the final scene where the monster is there and, and, the, and the basement comes out of that the thing, there's a, there's, a, there's a punk rock chick with me. We shot that scene first. We shot that scene in the movie first. She was supposed to be my girlfriend throughout the whole movie. But after we shot that scene, she got in a horrible car accident and was hospitalized and was no longer in any of the movies. So she's only in that one scene and Lloyd refused to reshoot. So it was that kind of movie, it was that kind of production where we just, it's in the can, we're using it. New Newcomb High was originally gonna be a, a film called Atomic High School, completely different story about a family of cannibals. Um, I was the young son, and, and my sister and I would bring home dates, and we would have them for dinner. And that was part of the script. And then Lloyd got way more involved with it, you know, put a little more money into it, and changed the whole story to, um, to Newcomb High. More questions? New York. It was Ninth Avenue. Yeah. Pulp Kitchen. Yeah. But he loved to shoot in New Jersey. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, cause, yeah, cause, yeah it's cheaper. And <laughs> now it's Long Island City. And then they chopped, as I mentioned, the sequel, the first two sequels in Westchester County, and then they moved up, I guess, to Buffalo or thereabouts for the fourth one. So they kept moving further and further away from Manhattan for their location. More questions? Um, okay, well, I wanted to hand another mic down there. Just wanted to talk a bit about um, what the toxic adventure means to you and how it led you to your own film. Let, let me just introduce, Joe here is the director of the film you're about to see, Toxic Tutu. It's an homage to the toxic adventure. Uh, and our premise was whatever happened to Melvin the Mob Boy from the Toxic Avenger. Um, and 30 years later, we will now discover it. And Joe did all the heavy lifting and is the director, the writer, the editor, the uh, lighter, the cameraman, um, and the janitor. So uh, everybody, this is Joe Nardelli. And thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for coming tonight. And if Lloyd were here, he, first of all, he sends his love. Um, and he can't be here for reasons you've already been told. But, um, you know, trauma movies don't get made unless they're made for you. And they often are made with your help and with your financing and with all kinds of things. So anyway, I just wanted to say that. I also wanted to say, just like anything else about Toxic Avenger, my intention to do it is, you really have to see the sense, the turn to the sense of my heart, which is answer in grace. You just have to see it. So that's what that said. The Trump entity, you know, it's worth it because Lloyd is a is a, an advocate for independent vision and independent filmmaking, like no other person on the earth at the same time. And he goes through the process, understands the process, and then pushes that process onto all of you guys who are interested. Toxic Tutu will not be on the screen tonight, but went for Lloyd, and for Mark, and for Rob, and for Gavin, and you know, and Toxic. <laughs> um, so anyway, you know, I just want, but I won't, and I will say that the reason Toxic Tutu was made at all is because my best friend Mark and I went to Manchester School together, and, and we're in film school together, and Mark never really made a convention here. Um, and in September-ish of 2012, he was contacted by the organizers of the Mad Monster Party, uh, Evan Navarre and Joe Moe, and, and Evan said, you know, Mark, we have a huge fan base, and we'd like you to be our celebrity guest. So Mark, who shares lots of stuff with me, called me and said, hey, you know, I just got a phone call. Um, should I do this? And I'm like, sure. He said, why not? And I'll bring a camera, and I'll just kind of document the weekend, and have a few minutes and a holler about what we do that weekend and have some fun. So that turned into what you will see tonight, for better or for worse, um, that is a film called Toxic Tutu that was made over a period of five years this month. We made our debut at Van Monster Party on March 23rd of 2013, and that was the first time I was in I will count. And then we created some scenes, and it just is a sort of weird rubber end story that pays off the to the Toxic Avenger. So, in the end, the Toxic Avenger is a film that I had a really hard time getting through whenever we hit the Taco Bell scene. And I'm talking that late 80s, early 90s, I'm like, oh, can't do it. I finally sat my ass down six years ago, and I said, I really need to like see this movie. It has become, honestly, one of my favorite films for many, many reasons and on many, many levels um, in my repertoire of handful of films that Joe has left out to me. Um, so enjoy Toxic 2 2. Thank you, Michael, for hosting us tonight. I'd like to, this is our premiere in New York. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Take a short break, about a 10 minute intermission, in case anyone needs to step out for a second. Uh, 10 minutes from now, we'll be back here. We will begin toxic.